This week's episode is sponsored for dailygiving.org. Dailygiving.org, great organization. Um, they give out money on your behalf. You give them a donation, they give it out every single day, a dollar a day. And they give out to tons of incredible organizations. I love it because I know that no matter what, every day someone's giving out a dollar on my behalf. Check it out, dailygiving.org, dailygiving.org. So we're entering into an amazing time, but it's a confusing time. Judgments, high holidays. How does it work? How are we being evaluated? What's God looking at? What are the things that we can do now to prepare ourselves for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? There's an incredible line that took place in last week's Parsha that it took like me like a triple take to understand this, but it's unbelievable. At the end of last week's Torah portion, Moses is speaking to the Jewish people. It's 40 years in the desert. And he's giving him like the last speeches before they end up, end up going in to Israel. And here's what he says. I'll read it in Hebrew and I'll translate it. God did not give you a heart to know. The enayim liros, and eyes to see. The oznayim lishmoa, and ears to hear. Ad hayom hazeh. Wait. God takes the Jews out of Egypt. To be the nation, you need to have the ability to process this. Not just physically, but spiritually, emotionally. There's a God in the world. We're the Jewish people. All of it. Eyes, ears, heart. The ability to understand life. God takes the Jews out of Egypt. When would be a good time to give them those tools? When do you think? How about when they left? Let's get rolling, guys. I'm going to give you the ability to perceive me. I'm going to give you the ability to see things. I'm going to give you the ability to hear the right things. I'm prepping you for nationhood. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Okay, God, God doesn't do it then. How about when he splits the sea? Good time? No, okay. How about when he reveals himself on Mount Sinai? What do you think? That should be a good time to give the Jews these abilities? No. What's going on? The building of the tabernacle? The receiving of the commandments, for real? The Jews are rolling through the desert 40 years, and they're not fully being given the tools to grapple. The last few days, if you will, at the end of the 40th year, God's like, oh, yeah, right. That's right, the tools. Sorry, eyes, ears, heart. Yeah, there you go. Hayom was there in this day. Why did God wait so long for it? I remember one time I was sitting in a conference room with an executive team. We were identifying people for promotions. And there was a few different departments in this large company that needed new heads. And we were looking at the, the, the list to see who would be the right person. And we get through one person's name. I'll never forget the crowd around. There's just a few executives. I was like, no, 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 no. And the CEO said, yeah, I want him. And I said, why? He said, well, do you remember a couple weeks ago we had that big meeting on one of the deals that we were doing? And I was like, yeah. I remember he was like really the one who was riding and leading that deal. And everyone's like, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I remember that meeting. It didn't go so well. Like I remember being in the room being like, we didn't really get what we wanted in this deal. And the CEO goes, do you remember the deal didn't go so well? I'm thinking, yeah. Like, where are you going? You mean the guy who didn't run the deal while should run the division? So said, CEO said, do you remember what happened afterwards? I'm thinking back. We had this big meeting. And it didn't go so well. And we, afterwards, we all sort of like huddled. And then we all left. And the guy who ran the meeting was so upset with that didn't go well that he actually stayed till really late that night to prepare himself to go back and figure out a way to fix what went wrong. And he goes, remember what happened at first? I'm thinking, yeah, I do. So he goes, remember that we all left and he stayed? And I said, yeah. He goes, do you know that he came to my office like 10 times during the next few days to get it right? And we got back in the room. And we ended up getting what we wanted. I'm like, yeah, I do sort of remember that. And this thing's so amazing. He said, you know, when you think about people that be, should be in charge, it's not about how talented they are. It's about how much they want it. 
when you want it badly enough, as long as you're capable, you end up figuring it out. I know he's got ways to go, but he wants it. I think we should go with him. And we did. We ended up promoting him to run the division. He became incredibly successful. What was so special about the day, Hayom Hazet, the day that the Jews got the heart, the eyes, the ears, like why couldn't God give it to them beforehand? So Rashi says something amazing. Listen to this, it's incredible. You know what happened that day? What happened was Moses was ending his life. And at the end of his life, he wrote out the Torah, the Torah that we have right now, the Torah that we read. Moses wrote it from divine inspiration. He wrote it. It's his hands. And he only wrote out one scroll. And he gave it to his tribe, the tribe of Levi. Of Levi. He handed him, them, the scroll. And when the other tribes saw that Moses wrote out the Torah and gave only one scroll to his tribe, they came to his tent and was upset. And they said, what about us? And Moses is like, well, they have it. It's fine. And like, it'll be good. And the, and the tribe says, they have it. It's ours too. We were also on Mount Sinai. Why should they have it? Because if they have a scroll, in a couple of generations, they're going to say that it was theirs. We want ours too. And they demanded Moses write them a scroll as well. And Moses saw that the Jewish people wanted it. They wanted it. And Moses says, you want it? Today is the day that you get the eyes and the ears and the heart to understand it. Because you had it from the beginning. But you can't get perception. You can't get the ability to be great when someone hands it to you. You have to want it yourself. You have to fight for it on your own. You have to stay up late and work hard because only when you bring in your desire do you get the things that were always available to you but couldn't be tapped into because God doesn't want to make us weak and doesn't want to make us lazy. So he can only give us so much. The rest are the things that he leaves for us. Eyes to see greatness in ourselves and people. Ears to hear the ways that we can become bigger, the heart to understand what is truth, the heart to understand what is right. Those are things that we have, but we have to fight for. Hayom, today, Moshe says, you got it. I think we make the mistake in thinking that we get judged on our actions. We don't get judged on our actions. We get judged on our desires. Many times, our actions are manifestations of our desires. But God's not looking at our hands. He's looking at our hearts. He's looking at our desires. He's asking, what do you want in life? What do you want? What What are you willing to work for? What are you willing to strive for? That's the prism of this period of time. Life has a way of just putting us on a treadmill having us go through life without asking questions. And every once in a while, God slows it down and goes, stop. Turn up the fire. What do you desire? We start having big desires. We start to desire big things in life for ourselves, for our families. We start to gain access to the talents and to the tools that were always there. And we stand before God on the holiest days and we say, I may have done wrong, but I want to share with you what I want to be this year. Help me get there. That's true greatness. And just like Moses' time, maybe, just maybe, just then, God says, today is the day that you're going to get all the things that were available to you, but I was waiting for you to show me that you wanted it.